Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the corner. Dr. Carey here. <laughs> Been doing a little bit of work on a couple rigs. Just going to do a quick little bench update. I got a feature car I'm going to probably do tomorrow, but for right now I'm going to do quick, just a quick bench update just to kind of let you all know where I'm at right now. Um, a couple, I don't know, about a year, year and a half, two years ago, a couple years ago, Picked up a bunch of uh, built-up semis that some guy had. And a lot of them were kind of just pulled apart, knocked apart, beat around, broken apart, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I've been working on putting some of them back together. I got one of the, uh, uh, a white truck up above here that I've put together a couple after, shortly after I got them all from this guy. Still got a few more to go through yet, but this is one of them. Um... When I got it, the grill was all busted apart. The hinge was broke, so the cab wasn't even on. The cab was just tossed in the box. The visor was off of it. <clears throat> Stacks in the air you know, are missing yet. I got to pull them off of another truck or another box. Um, air horns and clearance lights, none of that was on it. So I had to pull all that out of a, a new kit. Luckily, I had a, you know, a parts parts kit. And put the front bumper back on it. The front bumper was popped off of it when I got it. I thought about rebuilding it, repainting it, and doing all that stuff with it. But I'm like, you know, I kind of, I'm kind of partial to keeping them as a survivor, keeping them as they were. So I just put it back together the way it should be. Like I said, I got to put a couple stacks on it yet. <clears throat> Leaning towards just putting one single stack on it, coming all up, keeping it as like a day cab, workhorse type truck. Keeping it with that idea in mind. But, <laughs> but I could, uh, like I said, I was going to re rebuild it. But I've got two of these kits brand new out in the garage. I'm going to build one as uh, the regular cab dual drive. Then I'm thinking about building the other one as a single, uh, the day cab like this, but a dual drive. That way this will give me the day cab single drive. Other one will give me the day cab with a dual drive and then a regular cab with dual drive. Then I'll have three different versions of the Freightliner. Or excuse me, the white Freightliner. <laughs> Gotta be technical about it. That's what it is. There's a clearance lights and air horns. The only thing I didn't have was lenses, so I have to scour up some lenses sometime. But guy did a pretty decent job on it, building it wise. All the trucks that I got from this guy are pretty decent. I mean, they're worthy of just keeping as is, put them on the shelf and leave them alone. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. And next, you just saw the my move the frame. The frame was sitting here. The frame is out of the Papa truck. Now, for those of you that are looking to build just a simple, basic kind of a custom truck, but yet not getting into all the cutting and hacking of the frames, not sure how many of you are aware of this, but being that the Papa truck has been stretched out to hold the, the toe body, the, the bed part of this. This has actually been stretched out almost two feet versus a normal truck. If you were to put this truck without the, the hauler bed on it, just the chassis against the uh, stock, a bone stock K100 Aerodyne. K100 Aerodyne, I think is like right around 123 inches on the wheelbase. This is probably right around, you know, closer to 190, 200-ish. So this has already, already got a stretch on it versus a normal regular stock rig. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving the bed off. The bed's coming off, or going to be left off of this. I'm building the frame, and I'm going to use either the Aerodyne cab, or I've got a uh, flat top cab 
in the stripper right now being stripped flat top just doesn't have the upper kick to it the double bunk you know stacked bunk in here it's just a flat top with a single bed down below they don't have that arrow arrow look to it the arrow push the roof, on, roof design on it but uh the frame is this here just kind of give you an idea once get my stuff out of the way here so much stuff so much stuff just to kind of give you an idea comparing it to a stock freight liner the other axle would be here on the on a dual drive and these tires or this axle is you know almost close to three feet four feet back behind the stock freight liner the Kenworth wheelbase to your lead axle isn't too far off from this now when if you're going to build a truck and you want to measure it out they don't measure from center of the front axle to the center of the drive axle or the, or the lead drive axle when they measure the wheelbase on a semi it's different than measuring it on a car or pickup truck when they measure it on a semi they go from the center of your front hub to what's called the dead space in between the tandem axles so you would measure between that you know if you had the two tires on here you'd measure between the air space in between the two tandems on the semi if you had just a single axle like this where it was a day cab, then yeah, you'd measure from center hub to center hub. But on a dual drive truck where you got twin axles on it, twin drives, <clears throat> you measure off that center of the front hub to the dead space between the two axles in the back. That's how you get your measure your wheelbase on a semi. <clears throat> just so you know. <laughs> That way, if anybody's building a custom rig out there, you got an idea as how to come up with the wheelbase. I have a chart already measured out with various wheelbase truck, you know, wheelbases on it, converted to scale, um, converted to um, standard measure. A lot of trucks, like your 310 inch wheelbase, I think it's like 16 inches from here to here, measured out with a, a ruler. Correction on that, uh, 310 inch wheelbase is 12.4, 12.5, 12 and a half inches from dead space to center up front. As you just saw, I just put that chart within the video for anybody that's wanting to, to build a custom truck. That chart will give you all your different wheelbases roughly of, you know, various different lengths of trucks, so on and so forth to kind of give you an idea. So. I went through and measured out a bunch of measurements one day and just kind of picked a bunch of just different random wheelbase trucks that I know that are kind of common out there as far as stretch rigs. Kind of put that list together so that I could have it. And no, you can have it. <laughs> if you wanted to, you know, go back and stop the video with your phone. If you had, your, had it on your phone, you could take a screenshot of that and keep it within your pictures if you're interested in it. For the truck modelers out there but now what you've all been kind of anxiously awaiting from for <laughs> since my last well, a couple videos back you all kind of own this is the color i'm tending to lean towards painting this the chassis might be this color or i might paint it in a darker color purple i don't know yet all depends on if the, color, the decals that I have match this color or not. That's to be determined yet. As I was reaching for the other can of paint, I saw that and forgot I was going to tell you about that. But now, all of you know that there has been a car sitting on my bench waiting for some color. <laughs> well, it's got some color. I picked up some gold not realizing it was lacquer based until I got it home 
once I got it home, I realized it was lacquer. So I went digging around through all my paints and lo and behold, I had a can of gold spray paint left over from my Dale Earnhardt Bass Pro Shop car. So I pulled that out thinking, yes, cool. So I shot some gray primer on it, did some more fill work, did some more wet sanding, whatever else, and got primer again on it, shot it in gold, and did a little scuffing down wet sanding on the gold and shot it with the red. And this is what we come up with. The color turned out pretty cool. If you saw this stuff in the sun or a really bright light, you'd really see the color in it. I've got to do some wet sand and then i got to do some clear coating on it yet. But the Shelby is red. <laughs> this is going to be, end up, I think, being a pretty, pretty nice color choice for it. My original idea, I thought about shooting this car in black. There's so many black cars on the table that, you know, dark blue and so many of those colors, cars on a table when you take it somewhere. It's, I wanted something different, something that's going to stand out from the crowd. And I think this will definitely be a color that's going to jump out off the table. Like I say, I gotta. I'm gonna probably take my polishing kit to it and work it down a little bit, and then maybe shoot another coat of red on it. I don't know. I'm kind of liking the hue that this is in. I don't know if I'm gonna mess with that and adding another color or not. The more colors I brought onto this thing, the darker it got, and I don't want to go too dark with it. Kind of liking where it's at. The grill will get painted, detailed. <clears throat> I'll black wash it and then I'll highlight the the bars in like silver or something just to kind of bring the grill out of it. But yeah, it's in color. Let me throw the chassis underneath it here quick and I'll show you what it looks like with the chassis underneath it. And there's the chassis underneath it. Chassis will stay white. What you see the chassis is what the chassis is going to be. I've got a detail paint like the window net and then all the roll, roll bar padding and it will be done up in flat black. But for the most part that's what it's going to be. White interior in it. I still got to add the, uh, the fill panel on the back to block off the rear trunk area. And we drop it. <laughs> I think it'll look good with the white paint on it, or the white interior in it. No, the engine's not going to stay yellow. Right now, that's just in there for mock-up. That's going to come out and get pulled apart, painted, and put back together. It's going to have a twin turbo set up underneath the hood. I'm going to mount the twin turbos up in front of the engine. Have the intercooler and everything up in there. As this car isn't wild enough, I gotta have the underside of the hood wild too, right? <laughs> and I guess my next question for everybody is I'm kind of hung up on this, I don't know. Well, hold on one second. I'm gonna have to get move the camera here a little bit. Right. Hang on, guys, we're going for a ride. Okay, at least this way I can reach up underneath the camera a little bit. This is the wheel choice that I picked out for it. That's the wheel that I'm going to go with it. But the question is, the Argent color on them. Does it look okay this way? Or should I paint the wheels black or maybe paint them in a different contrasting color? Tell me your thoughts. Let me know what you think. I'm kind of... I. I this color is all right. It does look good with the red. No, I'm not going to go hot pink or nothing like that. But 
I thought about some bright color like a candy lime green would be kind of cool on there, but <laughs> not. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Should I black them out or should I go like a white? I don't know. Tell me your thoughts. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Ugh. And here we are at the ground floor. That's the stance what the car is going to look like or where it's going to be when it's built. I set the car up to be low. Of course, everything I build is pretty much low, unless it's a truck. <laughs> oh, a semi-truck. Even then, I like to lower a little bit. But yeah, tell me what your thoughts are. What do you think of the color? What do you think of the wheel colors? Let me know what you think. Give me some ideas. <laughs> right now, I'm kind of tending toward leaving it as is, but give me some thoughts to play around with. See what y'all think. And with that in mind, we're going to cut you loose. I'm going to wrap this up. We've got a busy day today. We're going out of town today. We're going to a surprise birthday party for my sister-in-law. So I'm going to wrap this up and tinker around with that KW that's sitting in the background here. And maybe get that a little bit further here. Uh, KW, I did lower the suspension, the suspension on it. I dropped about eighth of an inch out of the height. That way it'll drop it down a little bit. Like I said, I can't leave nothing alone. <laughs> Always got to tinker and lower something. Lower the better. At least I think so, anyway. <laughs> Keep scratching that plastic, everybody. And we'll see you on the corner.